you can hit me with the words you fling Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's Nick Atkin on South China Morning Post MMA. This is the Post Fight Podcast, and I am here to break down UFC Vegas 8, UFC Fight Night, Smith versus Rakic, whatever you want to call it. As usual, I'm joined by my co-host Chris Edwards-Bailey and John Hyunko. Guys, how's it going? All good. Yeah, it's All good? You got uh, nothing better than that? Season. Typhoon oh, yeah. season. Yeah. We're about to get our heads blown off. <laughs> Yeah, John's in Korea. There's a typhoon going there. Uh, Chris and I are in Hong Kong. The virus is getting a little bit better over here. We're down to, I don't know, we're between 10 and 20 cases a day now. Looks like we're going to be able to go outside again, finally, Chris, isn't it? Yeah, um, I'm going to yeah. be sweet on that beach, working on yeah. the tan. <laughs> <laughs> working on the tan, yeah. I can, I can work on the tan on my roof right now. It doesn't matter. You can see how <laughs> bronzed I am. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Try not best. the same color as this behind me. No, anyway. <laughs> All right, UFC Vegas 8, obviously the main event, Anthony Smith versus Alexander Rakic. We're here to break it down. John, I'll start with you. What's your pick? Man, this is a tough one. The reason why is uh, the one thing I could point to in this fight is Anthony Smith. You know, if it was, if they were coming off, let's say, like a six-month layoff and heading into this fight, I would take Anthony Smith, but man, Anthony Smith just fought less than three months ago or around three months ago, and he took a pretty big beating from uh, Glover Texera, took a lot of damage, lost a tooth, you know, broke some stuff in his face, and uh, I don't know how how much he has recovered from that, you know what I mean? Like, you've seen it before in other fighters where they go through a, a war and they come back too early and they get knocked out, you know, and, and it, and it almost seemed like it, they get knocked out too easily off like one punch. And, you know, the, the perfect example would be the, the steep a versus Daniel Cormier fight. The first one where, uh, steep a, he defended the title against, uh, Francis and but that fight was a war and he took a lot of damage in that fight and he came back pretty quick and, and faced Daniel. And then Daniel hit clipped him, you know, in the clinch. And we never seen, um, Stipe take a punch like that and get knocked out. So I don't know. Like, it's a funny pick. So the reason I'm taking Rackets is because of that reason and because Rackets is so explosive, so fast. And I think he ne he needs to redeem himself from that last fight where he felt like the judges robbed him against Vulcan. And, uh, and you know, we were there in Seoul. The fight could have went either way. But uh, Rackets, you know, he got the, the, the short end of the stick, so to say. And, and I think that lit him, you know, lit a, a fire under him. And I see him coming out really explosive, really fast and, and probably clipping uh, Smith early and, and taking him out um, because of how much damage Smith took. And he's coming in here too quick, I feel. But, you know, maybe I'm wrong. What do you think, Chris? You think Smith, uh, he, he's, he's fully recovered? Well, you know exactly what I'm like, John. I'm always one of them, have as much recovery, have as much time. I'm always banging on about it. I mean, look, Anthony Smith right now, he looks fantastic with those brand new gnashes he's got in his mouth, those beautiful white teeth. He looks like Roberto Firmino from Liverpool. Gleaming smile. But yeah, he did take one hell of a beating. I mean, even if you just look at Rakic, he's pretty much taken about eight months off to get himself, nine months off to get himself back to fighting again. And that's sometimes what you do have to do. And I do think, for me, everything is really going with Rakic. I don't think Anthony Smith can deal with everything that Rakic is capable of. And I actually think we're going to see this fight go all the way to the end, probably to a close decision. But I'd probably give it um, Rakic to win by one. You think this fight's going to go to the decision? I don't see that happening. Wait, I don't. Sorry. These guys are just too explosive. These guys are just too powerful and... and and I don't see it even going past the third round. I think oh, someone's wow. going to hurt somebody in this one really bad. And we might see some ebbs and flows in this one too. Like, you know, one guy will hurt the other guy and rush in and, and he'll clip him and then they'll go back and forth. I see a, a, a really good fight in this one. I don't see one person really dominating until the finish comes then it's just going to be over, you know, and, and it's going to be, a, it's going to be a wild one. I think, you know, both these guys, they're they're really sneaky with their their uh, their approach and their offense. Like you know, like with Smith, you know, he looks like he's tired and he's hurt, but then all of a sudden when he punches, his speed it just it just he just gets faster and, and it looks like he just gets more powerful. So it's he's hard to read. Rakic is not hard to read. That guy goes in there with a lot of power, with a lot of speed, man, and he's just moves so slick. I you know, 
Smith is much more ortho- unorthodox, and uh, Rackage is just, just uh, a lot more smoother on the feet. And and uh, man, I just see, uh, yeah, these guys going head to head and just just pounding on each other, and and Rackage coming out on top. Well, John, you and I were in Busan for Rakic's last fight against Volkan Uzdemir. He's still angry about that. He was still moaning in his virtual media day. He said, I won that fight. It was a decision lost. Uh, do you agree with him? Is, uh, Volkan has since gone to lose to Yuri Pachowska. Does Rakic have a case for that fight? Because then he'd be on, what, a seven-fight winning streak, is it? Yeah. It, I don't know if he has a case. For it, it could have went either way, you know. From what I saw and rewatching the fight, it could have went either way. Uh, Vulcan was a, he did a very good job of uh, sticking to the game plan in that fight and and chopping away at the at the leg, and and sticking and moving. And e- even though um, Brackage probably hit him with the more damaging shots, it seemed like Vulcan in that fight won that fight. You know, from bell to bell. You know, I mean, distance wise and and in the eyes of the judges. So. Um, yeah, I think uh, it, didn't, it didn't matter if Rakic would have won. You know, I, I wouldn't argue with that. And Vulcan would have been arguing about it right now to this day that he won that fight. So uh, it doesn't really matter. That's the past. I think he should move forward. But, yeah, if he if he, if he lets that fight, that decision, uh, push him to the next level, that's great, man. I think sometimes uh, fighters, they need that close loss to put, push him over the edge and, and give him that little uh, extra um, impetus or whatever, so to call uh, yeah, so Rakic, uh, man, I'm I'm excited to see what he can do. I think that di- he needed that little close little decision to get him angry, and uh, maybe he's gonna take it out on Smith. I, I'm, you know, I just recently I was on YouTube and and they had the the Jimmy Manuel fight, man, and just like that was just so vicious. That was like one of the most vicious knockouts in the light heavyweight division's history, man. And and he did it to Jimmy Manuel, a guy that usually does. You know he does put in the beatings. He he he. You know he he gets those highlight reel knockouts. So, yeah, I'm I'm excited for this fight. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know about the the decision. But uh, I I actually asked Vulcan about this fight coming up, and you know, and I asked him to break it down. And and you should have seen the comment section of uh, <laughs> uh, Rakic's fans. They just went nuts, man. They're you know. Yes, John. I was going to say words you know, everywhere. Yeah. Gotta be careful what you say about Alexander Rekic because he's got this crazy fan base from Eastern Europe. So don't slug yeah. him off or anything. Otherwise, they're all going <laughs> to download this video, get us in trouble with YouTube. Uh, Chris, do we, we have a quick look at the odds. Uh, who they got? Favorite? This is Tapology odds, not not anything we know about. Um, moderate favorite for Rekic, uh, minus three hundred. Smith is a moderate underdog, plus two forty. Is that a bit odd, Chris, given Smith, I think, is the higher-ranked guy. He's number five. Yeah, Rakic is number eight. A win for Rakic. We'll put him in the top five, obviously. But if you're Anthony yeah. Smith, yeah, you're coming off that loss. But feeling a little bit disrespected there? Well, I think they would probably be much, much closer odds, and they'd probably both be about evens, probably with uh, Rakic, probably just on the outside otherwise. But I think with the fast turnaround, people do have to remember, I mean, most people did not know about Rakic until he lost to Ozdemir. We have to remember before that he was on a 13 fight winning streak and he has got all everything in his ability to win. Um, I just think he probably is the edge favorite, especially in these COVID times. Um, so the odds are just about right. But if I was going for an outside bet, I'd probably go for Anthony Smith personally. All right. Well, let's move on. Co main event Robbie Lawler against Neil Magny. Well to wait. Um, John, let's start with you. Where do you stand on this one? Man, <laughs> this this is a funny matchup right here. Robbie Lawler, he's stepping in on short notice. So, you know, we could take it for what it is. And he comes in on a three-fight losing streak. But he's lost to three of the best guys in the division. Dos Anjos, Askren, Covington. And I don't know. I think... Lawler might have some problems against uh, Magny. Magny's, you know, he's so tall. He's so long. He fights well from distance. And when he gets close, he knows how to hang on you and wear you down. And and I think he probably might be able to do that against Lawler. You know what I mean? I don't think Lawler had enough time to prepare for someone like Magny. But Magny, I don't think he prepares for anybody in particular. He just goes in there and fights. And uh, if he doesn't get caught by a big punch... Um, I see Magny taking this and into you know into the like the third round, maybe getting a decision, uh, maybe taking it to the ground and getting submission. Um, 
but you know it's it's hard to say but I, i'm gonna go with magni in this fight uh with with lawler everything stacked against him and he hasn't really looked the same in the last couple of fights you know what i mean he you know we saw that you know exchange with ben Askren early in that fight but other than that you know what i mean like he's just hung in there and he's kind of just stayed in the fight and nothing nothing serious not not we didn't see the Lawler from, let's say, the Johnny Hendricks days when, you know, when he was fighting Carlos Condit. We haven't seen that Lawler lately. And I feel like it could be that time where he's kind of weighing down in his career. And, and it sucks to see that. But, you know, I think this will be the test to see if uh, if he's going to stay at top 10, top 15 level fighter or if he's just on his way out right now. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm going with Magni. Chris, Magni. That's two two wins in a row. He's I think one, uh, four and one in his last five. He's looked impressive. He's trying to shake off this gatekeeper tag. Where do you have him? You, is he the security guard? Yeah, well, inside it's, the gate. <laughs> it's an absolute oddity. This one, Neil Magny. You know, he's a fighter who's actually been in the UFC since 2013. He won five fights in a calendar year in 2014, and. Uh, Every time he seems to win two or three fights, he gets a big name like he did against uh, Ponzinibbio, and then he really let it, let himself down. I actually wish this fight would have happened two or three years ago because I just actually think Neil Magny is probably not as good as peak Robbie Lawler, but I don't think 38-year-old Robbie Lawler is really going to do anything to challenge Neil Magny in this fight. And I mean, anyone who has any disrespect to Robbie Lawler um, I think you have to show him some respect. I mean, you were just talking about his losses against three of the best. This loss before that was Tyrone Woodley, wins over Donald Cerrone, Carlos Condor, wars with Rory McDonald, Johnny Hendricks, um, one of the best to ever do it. But I just think it's starting to get to that point where it's time to start winding down. And maybe if he does beat Magny, he's got one last run in him. But I feel like Magny has much more to give the division at 32 years old. All right, let's check out the odds. Oh, God, who have we got here? All right. Tapology have got Neil Magny as the moderate favorite, minus 235. Robbie Lawler, slight underdog, plus 190. John, you think that's a fair reflection of what we've got here? Yeah, I, I think it is a fair reflection. If you look at it, like Chris was saying earlier, the, the age difference, there's a five-year age difference, and and the amount of fights, you know, it's a little bit more and 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 you gotta look at it, the wars he's been in, right? The five rounders he's been Roy in, McDonald's. and uh, yeah, Roy McDonald, Carlos Condit, Johnny Hendricks, man, I think that stuff is starting to catch up to him, to be honest with you, and uh, and it, and it kind of affects his ability to react to uh, his opponents, and 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 if you've seen his last couple of fights, yes, they were against the top guys in the division, but. It just didn't seem like him. And if he if he was performing like he did against he, uh, Roy McDonald, I think he would have beat uh, Covington and and uh, Dos Anjos and Askren easily, but he didn't. So Neil Magny, he's the test. It's not even Robbie Lawler's the test for Neil Magny. Neil Magny's the test for Robbie Lawler in this fight to see if Robbie Lawler still has it. But you know, like you know, the people in his camp, they t say that he still does have it. So we'll, we'll get to see in this fight against uh, Magni. Okay, why don't we move on? This one, you're going to love it, John, aren't you? South Korea stand-up, Ji Young Kim is up against Alexa Grasso. I think I know who you're going to say is going to win, but we'll throw it to you anyway, John. <laughs> Give us your prediction. Uh, I'm going to take uh, Alexa Grasso in this oh, fight. Oh, my goodness. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, of course, <laughs> I'm going to take Ji Young Kim. She's coming in. A much bigger opponent you know i mean she she's coming from bantamweight down to flyweight and you know she still has that size and the strength and uh grasso he's she's coming up this is her fight first fight in fly at flyweight from straw weight and uh and i think like that that's the biggest difference right here that uh that you know what's that's crazy uh jian kim is the underdog in this fight isn't that wild? And Jiang Kim's ranked number 14th in the flyweight division in Grosso's first fight at flyweight. That's that just shows you how the odds are. I don't even know what to say right there, you know. But uh, just just looking at um, just to give you some insight into Jiang Kim, she she was supposed to fight on the Busan card that we were at, Nick. You know, last December she she dislocated her elbow, had surgery, and uh, and she got she got root booked for Alessa Grosso. I, I believe in June, and then that got canceled because of the coronavirus. 
and then this this fight got rebooked to this event coming up this weekend uh so she's been preparing for alexa grasso for let's say four or five months now and uh she seems like she's prepared i wish she would have done her camp like she said she was going to at alliance mma in san diego but she didn't and and that kind of worries me a little bit because she's performed the best since she's actually went over there and 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 joined that team and uh but this time around she stayed in korea and she's been working with this movement coach he's actually a, a disciple of Ido Ido Portal Portal you know the guy that uh Ar- Conor McGregor was using uh during his heyday the movement guy with the with the what is it what did they what did Nate, Nate Diaz call it touch butt he was doing the touch butt <laughs> in the park yeah that guy uh yeah so she's got some guy like that helping her out and and I'm very interested to see what she's going to do and also she's missed weight in her last two fights and uh I wonder if she's going to even gonna make weight this time I talked to her I interviewed her she says that uh you know she has a special diet going on and she's been really uh focused on her weight and and watching it so it should be no problem but man she's lost 30% of her purse twice now that must suck really bad i'm pretty sure you know that money is important so she's going to make the weight but yeah i'm picking her to win this fight i think she's going to beat her down i think she's going to you know it's going to be a third round finish for uh fire fist chris fire fist great you, name you agree yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, my, my thing is I actually do f- fancy Fire Fist to win. I think she's fantastic and got all the skills. My only two problems is when you actually look at her two losses, I have a huge problem. Sometimes I actually find it in some of those fights, she seems to get bored in the middle and become slightly inactive. I'd like to see her stay more active. I actually think on the main card, that this is actually the most interesting fight I think they're probably the two most evenly matched people, similar stage in their careers. They've only really lost to fairly top echelon ranked people in the in the division. So I really think the winner of this can really push them for, forward. And if I had to choose someone, I'd probably go for Fire Fist to win by TKO. And talking about the odds, we saw last weekend, sometimes the odds mean nothing. Shout out to Trevin, Five Star Jones, Squam Zone, <laughs> Trevin Jones. Huge underdog, wasn't he? And has Shana Dobson as well. Two big upsets. So I don't even know why we're doing this. Anyway, let's move on. We've got Ricardo Lamas against Bill Algeo. I'm going to throw it to Chris. Let's mix it up. Who have you got in this one? Um, For this one, actually, I think it's a really, really tough one to call. I'm going to go with Ricardo Lamas just because I've actually had more experience watching his fights. I think he's fantastic. He's got great groundwork. And um, I actually think he's just going to show that he's got a little bit more experience than Bill Alagi. Algio, sorry. Is that Bill Algio? Oh, uh, John can enlighten us. He knows everyone's pronunciation of everyone's name. <laughs> no, yeah, I think it's Algio. Okay. Yeah. Did you talk to him, John, for no, the Kumate I didn't, I haven't or SCMP MMA? No, I haven't oh, talked to him. Rare time you haven't spoken to someone. Okay. Well, yeah, who have you got for this one? Um, It's hard to pick against uh, Lamas in this one because Lamas has been preparing for a fight for the last couple of months. And uh, Algio's taking this fight on i believe a week's notice and uh he's coming off a a loss the last time we saw him actually he's coming off a win but the last time we saw him fight somebody that was uh you know high level was in the contender series last year and he lost the decision to uh brandon long long longing longing you know a uk guy uh he fights for pfl now he's a really good and he lost the decision to him i kind of see that happening in this one i feel like lamas is going to go in there he's still highly he's still you know very high skilled fighter he's he's still a top 20 guy in the world at featherweight and i feel like he's going to show us in this fight that uh that you know he still he still has he still has it to you know to uh, kind of hang with the younger guys the the guys that are coming in and this guy he's coming in on late short notice against uh lamas uh, a guy that can you know knock dudes out and, and submit guys and man it's it's a big big uh opportunity but also at the same time it's a big risk for him to come in and uh fight lamas but yeah, uh well, maybe you could say that on the flip side it's a big risk for lamas to take a short notice fight against a guy that's pretty much unknown yeah it's a huge jump up in class for algio because i mean 
he fought Aldo for the title. He fought Max Holloway. He fought Chad Mendes. I mean, Lamas has been around, and I just, I just think it's too much, too fast, and I think he's just going to out-veteran him, to tell you the truth. His last one was a loss to Calvin Cotto, I believe. Was it? I'll try and bring up the record. Hang on. Yeah. And then a few yeah. fights before that, about last year, he fought uh, Josh Emmett as well, which he lost, but does show you that he is fighting the very top guys in the division. Oh, man, he's been fighting the best guys for the past five, six years. Look at his resume. He's got wins over Charles Oliveira, Darren Elkins, uh, Dennis Bermudez, Eric Koch, Hatsu Hayoki, Cup Swanson. Man, this guy's been in there with the best of the best. Uh, we got to respect that in this one, especially a guy against a guy that's a new newcomer, a, 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 a debutante. And a guy that lost at the contender series, you know, I mean, I look at that and say, you know, is he good enough to beat Lamas, man? But we've seen crazier things happen. Trevin Jones last week. Go check his interview out on uh, SCMP <laughs> YouTube page. Go subscribe and uh, push that notification button. That's great advice, John. Uh, okay, we got to round out this card. Oh, I've got to change the share screen again. Bear with me. All right. Yeah, light heavyweight bout, Magomed Ankalaya versus Ayon Kutalaba. Uh, what are you going for, John? This should be a fun one, right? Oh, yeah. The first one was a fun one, and I hope it, it plays out exactly the same way. I just looked out <laughs> the first fight played out where uh, Kutalaba came out and did the rope dope and it was just so fun to watch. It's just, you know, it's rare when you watch a fight and you laugh. You know, in that fight, you're laughing during the fight with the violence going on. And I see that, uh, you know, I, th- I feel like that first fight told us exactly what we need to know about this matchup is that uh, Kutalaba is going to try to, you know, tr- be the trickster in this fight. And uh, what is it? Ankalaev, he's going to come in there with the straight punches, with the power shots, and he's going to clip Kutalaba. And I, I feel like it's going to be over in the first round, just like it was in the in the first fight. I'm, I'm taking Magomed in this fight. First round knockout. Yeah, Magomed is on four fight win streak. It looks like Chris. Can you see Kutalaba winning this one? I very much doubt it. I mean, Ankalaev is an um, absolute fantastic, fantastic wrestling background. Great striking. He, to me, is the bigger guy, the more powerful guy, the more explosive guy. And I do have him to win it um, unless Kutalaba can get him down on the floor. That's the only one because um, he did look outclassed when he did lose um, to Paul Craig. Okay. <laughs> the odds reflect Damn, that a Paul little Craig. bit, don't they? Yeah, plus 285, underdog, Utalaba. A moderate favorite, at minus 370. All right, what about the prelims? Guys, what, what should people look out for on the prelims? I, th- I think we all agreed. We want to check out this one, don't we? Maki Patolo against Impa Kasanganai. Both of the guys are contender series alums. Uh, Kasanganai, this he, he he was on the show two weeks ago, right? This he had a quick turnaround. Dana White asked him, he asked Dana White for a fight. He's got it. This is crazy, isn't it? John, we'll go we'll go with you. What do you, how do you see this fight going? Man, like you said, it is crazy, and and it's it's very hard to pick because both guys are are making very quick turnarounds. Patoli, he's a power striker. I feel like Kasanganai is a little bit more polished, a little bit more technical compared to Patoli. And uh, it's going to be either a, a knockout by Patoli or Kasanganai is going to, you know, point point fight and, and get it to the decision and win. Uh, Kasanganai has that undefeated record. But I don't think he's going to keep it for very long fighting in the UFC. So it could be this one. It could be the next one. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, this is an interesting fight. But I'm taking a – man, it's hard. I'm taking a Kinsanganai to uh, – I think his chin will hold up. And uh, and and he's going to get that decision win over Patoli. Yeah, 7-0, and oh, Chris. Uh, do you think it's too soon for Kinsanganai? Would you rather see him wait a little bit longer? I know you talk about it a lot, uh, not rushing in, having these quick turnarounds. Well, and it's a bit of a... don't rush in and don't do quick turnarounds. That's what I'm saying to the elite guys, to the rank guys, to the people who are making 30 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand a fight. I mean, look, if you're in the contender series, you're not really getting paid much money. 
if you get in this fight to fight in the opportunity and you can win it, it can be absolutely life changing. And it shows you're willing to work for the company. And I want to see fighters get paid. I want to see them make money. So um, good on him for going out there and fighting. He knows his body better than I do. And I hope he can go and get the result because I do actually think he's super, super talented. Yeah, you can't really say no, can you, when you're in his yeah. position? I think he was on the show before. He won and he didn't get a contract. They wanted to see more out of him. Uh, yeah, what are the odds that we got? Sl- he's a slight favorite, minus 140. <laughs> uh, Makatolo is plus 115 there, even. I'm going to go for Kasanga and I. What, let's just both, let's, sorry, let's finish up our predictions here. Uh, John, say it again. You're Kasanga and I, right? Yeah, Kasanga and I by decision okay. or a, a late stoppage, if a stoppage even happens. All right, everyone put your money on Kasanga and I, it seems. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay, anything else on these prelims jump out to you guys? Just have a quick scan of it. We've got Mallory Martin against Hannah Cyphers, Zach Cummings against Alessio de Chirico, Emily Whitmire against Pollyanna Viana, Sean Brady against Christian Aguilera. Has the Giga fight been cancelled? Looks like it. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, well, if there's someone I was going to check out, I haven't, don't know much about them. I've just been trying to get what parts of their fights I can on the internet from their history. Um, I think they're a super high favorite with most of the bookies out there. That would be Sean Brady. He is, uh, I think, uh, one to nine on the UK bookmaking to win this fight. Um, undefeated. Um, I think seven knockouts or something like this. So um should be a good fight and hopefully uh, a good way to start off the card. Whose washing machine is going off there? Is that you, Chris? Yeah, I don't know how to pause it. <laughs> it's fine. No worries. You got to clean your, your clothes. So, yeah, yeah. It's part yeah. of life. Yeah, uh, John, yeah, anything that stands out for you, man? Yeah, yeah. Sean Brady, I agree with him. Sean Brady, you got to watch out for this guy. His first two fights he's undefeated his first his two fights in the ufc he's beat court mcgee who is a, a tough matchup for a debut and he beat the austrian wonder boy who's not even in the ufc anymore and he was he had a lot of hype coming into the into ufc and he had a lot of hype during his reign or during his time with the promotion sean brady man he i think that he's going to be able to go in here and this guy uh christian aguilera He's a guy that will stand and bang with you. And uh, I think Sean Brady needs that type of fighter to kind of give him that that uh, that breakout performance. And and we could have that moment for Sean Brady in this fight. I, th- I think that his I think he'll keep his uh, undefeated record intact and he's going to get a big, big knockout in this fight. I see it coming, man, like a performance of the night bonus type knockout. Um, other than that, um, you know, Mallory Martin, she's uh she's a girl that's pretty vicious. Uh, I feel that if she could get Hannah Cyphers to the ground, man, that fight's gonna be bloody, and and uh, Mallory Martin's just gonna beat on her. But that's if she gets her to the ground. If they stay standing, Cyphers has a chance. Uh, but if you saw what happened to Cyphers in uh, the last fight, when she gets to the ground and against a, an opponent that's much bigger than her, and Martin is much bigger, much stronger. It's it's she doesn't have a good time. So uh, yeah, Martin better get that wrestling going, and we might see a a, a beatdown in that fight. Uh, uh, Whitmire versus Viana. That fight was supposed to happen uh, a few months back, and uh, Whitmire had some problems with the weight cut, so it got canceled. I'm I'm interested. I'm interested to see uh, where Whitmire is because she sits at four and three in the UFC, and you know what happened last week. With Shanna Dobson, she was at three and four in the UFC facing a, a prospect, and she came in there and upset, uh, what is it, Agapova. So I wonder if uh, Emily Whitmire can do that against Viana because Viana has done a decent job. And she's the one, remember, she's the one in Brazil that uh, caught the, the, the robber and, the, and beat yeah. the hell out of him. So yeah, uh, yeah, she's yeah. got a vicious, she's a, she's a pretty girl. Emily Whitmire is a pretty girl too. But man, those girls can uh, throw down. So we're going to see. I'm interested to see that fight. It's going to be fun. All right. Well, thanks for joining me as usual, guys. Let's let's all let Chris take the laundry out. You don't want to leave it in too long. Yes. Man, Sorry about I'm that. Old, no, I'm, I don't want it to smell. I might be going <laughs> around later to eat chicken wings. Anyway, yeah, John, thanks again. Thanks, Chris. 
And I'll uh, see you all again for the recap on Sunday or Saturday night in the US. Anyway, thanks, guys, everyone. Thanks for watching. We saw you. We'll see you all again next time.